Okay, so welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be doing a recap of The Haunting of Bly Manor, Episode 5, The Altar of the Dead. But before I get into that, let's do a brief recap of Episode 4, The Way It Came. Uh, episode 4 was basically a lot of flashbacks of Danny, you know, her story, um, what happened, and how she ended up in uh, London. And so you find out that uh, Danny had a childhood friend named Edmund. Um, they grew up together. They eventually became uh, an item. Their relationship progressed to the point where they got engaged. It was a whole thing. Both families were ecstatic. But the thing is, Danny had been apprehensive the most of the time, uh, most of the time you saw her in the, in this episode when she was with her family and friends, she was noticeably distressed. And I think it had a lot to do, I'm sure it had a lot to do with the fact that she was either struggling with her sexuality or just at that point knew that she was not attracted to men, but things had progressed so far. She felt like, you know, it was almost impossible for her to turn back. But eventually, she did um, uh, have an honest conversation with uh, Edmund. Of course, that did not end well. And you know, they got into an argument in the car. Edmund steps out of the car. And that is basically the vision that we see every time this entity appears to Danny and me. Well, it started appearing to her in mirrors and now it's just appearing to her um, just outright. And of course the beams, the where it looks like the eyes are glowing, that um, those lights are from the headlights of a truck. As soon as he stepped out of the car, he was, he was distracted, he was emotional and was not paying attention. He stepped out of the vehicle and he was hit by a truck. Um, obviously, uh, Danny, a lot of the panic attacks as far as the glasses, which belong to him, as you can see, um, every time, you know, it comes up, that's what triggers her panic attack because she still has a lot of guilt surrounding that incident because, you know, she do, she feels somewhat responsible for that. Um, the next thing we find out is that Miles, you know, he's still, it's still a question mark as to if Miles have mental issues, if Miles is being manipulated by some entity in the house, because um, he had this outburst at dinner and then by the time Danny came in to kind of tuck him in and talk to him about the situation, it was like night and day. So like I keep saying in these recaps that Miles is like a Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and it's like you never know like what you're gonna get from him and like where it's all, where it stems from. And it seems to come from nowhere. Like, you know, this in episode four, where they were talking about wine and he wanted a glass of wine. And of course, Danny told him no. And then he just like, I don't, they were talking about how their, their mother used to give them wine, but they would put like, it would be watered down. And he's like, I don't want watered down wine. I want a real drink. And it's like, who is he channeling? Who was he channeling there? I almost want to say he was channeling um, Peter Quint, but at this point, we still don't know whether he's alive or dead. So I don't know what exactly is going on with Miles, but um, there's still a question mark there. Um, we did find out that um, it appears that all of the dolls in um, Flora's dollhouse serve a purpose and they're positioned in a specific place. And we found that out when Danny actually removed uh, the Peter because Flora makes a doll of everyone. It seems like she makes a doll of everyone that comes into the house. And Flora comes in and asks her to kindly not to move her dolls. Is that they have been placed in a specific place for a reason. And I'm like, oh, what is that about? We also know that Flora is someone or something is communicating with Flora. Because it seems like every time she's having a conversation with uh, Danny... It's like she's like someone is like telling, feeding her information of what to say, or there is something going on there, as we saw in this clip. And we also see that Danny is starting to notice it, and she actually asks her about like what what are you looking at? Why are you looking over my shoulder? And of course, uh, uh, Flora was like, I don't really know what, what you're talking about, girl. Um, 
So what I thought, what I felt like was going to happen, uh, Danny and Jamie had a an um, entanglement. We'll use that. <laughs> so no, they you know it, they finally succumbed to. It was obvious that they were attracted to each other, and it was abruptly ended when uh, Danny saw Edmund, and you know the whole situation was kind of uh, Mr. Screw Jamie. Uh, kind of misread the situation. She thought that uh, uh, Danny didn't want to pursue the relationship with her, but in fact, Danny was actually scared. If that's what made Danny pull away, it wasn't that she was pulling away from Jamie. She was trying to move away from Ed Edmund, but of course, Jamie doesn't know that. Another thing we did see is that um, Owen and Hannah, you know, getting a little cozy, you know, and he actually was talking to her about going to um, Paris. So, okay, so we see that, you know, things could be working out. Things could be working out. And it was it's also been confirmed at this point that that uh, Flora and Miles, they're really trying to protect um, Danny. Obviously, she, she doesn't know that. And so in this past episode, uh, Danny, obviously, to relive all of these things that happened in her past with, with Edmund and the guilt... She, you know, was out of room wandering at night. Something triggered um, Flora. She knew something was wrong. She got Miles and they stopped Danny before she could reach the front door. And then we see why they stopped her and they basically distracted her with this whole tale of, day, of Flora having this nightmare. And of course she stopped to talk to Flora. And as you can see in the clip, I tried to circle it. There was this entity that was actually walking out of the house. And this is the same entity that's been leaving the muddy footprints. And so they stopped Danny either before she could see this entity or possibly run into it. We don't know what would have happened. And so based on this, it's clear that they're trying to protect her. So that was pretty much uh, what happened. Obviously there were some other things you would have to actually watch the episode if you want to get all that details or watch my previous review. But we're going to leave that there, and I'm going to move forward with recapping episode five, The Altar of the Dead. So if you're interested in hearing what I have to say, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm so damn pissed. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, so this has by far been the best, ep to me, has been the best episode and the most interesting episode thus far. So it opens with um, Owen and Hannah. They're still at the bonfire. And uh, we kind of get we get to hear their conversations. Remember, uh, Danny and Jamie walked off, and so we didn't know what uh, Hannah and Owen were talking about. And he was talking about you know about how the memory is fickle, and his mom taught him that, and so you can't trust the past. And you know he you know wants to at this point basically he wants to live in the now and he's trying to convince um and that's when we came in and he was trying to talking about uh her, him and hannah going to going to paris and we kind of get an understanding of why she's been feeling out of sorts for a while so we flash to uh she's sitting in the kitchen owen walks in and he's he comes in for an interview and so they, she introduced herself. Even then, she was kind of deep in thought. So she introduced herself. And they sit down to talk. And she starts asking him about, you know, why he's looking for the job. And how, you know, he used to, he uh, was in Paris. And, like, this would seem kind of boring to you. And, and he, you know, told her that, you know, in Paris he was a sous, a sous chef. And so um, here he would be, he would be responsible for preparing everything and it would be a lot, you know, um, it would be better for him and it'll be, you know, more, more training so he can perfect his craft. And then he talked about, and then she told him that he would be cooking for two children, uh, Miles and, um, uh, Flora, I forget the ages at this point, five and six, I um, mean, how really like seven, eight, something like that. And, um, he, uh, was you know okay with that and then he told her about his mom and you know one of the other reasons he moved back is so that he could be near his mom because his mom is sick and you know the whole thing and so while they were talking uh she heard a voice uh call out to her 
And so she gets up, walks through the door, and then she finds herself in the forbidden area of the house. But at this point, it's, you know, it's open. It's not covered or anything like that. So she has actually gone back in time. And so uh, she walks through the door and you can see by her face, like she's completely amazed, like what exactly is going on here? And so while she's looking around the room, so the a lady comes and tells her that the uh, lady, Lord and Lady Wingrave has arrived. And so she does one little, you know, another, you know, so she surveys the room to make sure that everything is, you know, tip top shape. And then she goes out to meet them, meet the, meet them. And so you finally get to see, you see a uh, young, uh, younger, uh, Laura and, uh, Flora, Flora and Miles. You see, um, Henry Wingate and, uh, and, uh. Peter Quint, who's his driver, and then you finally get to see Lord and Lady uh, Wingate, Wingrave, keep saying Wingate. And so they seem like really nice, you know, sweet people. Um, they weren't at all, didn't come across as pretentious at all, and you know, they was very happy to see her, and they were happy to be there, and you could tell she, she just didn't like, she didn't care for, uh, even then she didn't care for Peter. And so she says to him, cause he took the bags out the trunk, but he has, he just put the bags on the ground and he's now leaned up against the car smoking. And she was like, okay, are you going to bring the bags in? And he was like, uh, yeah, eventually. And so she kind of gave him this look and then she went on and walked in the house. Now, when she walked in the house this time, she walked in and it was completely different. She, you know, was looking at the foyer as really dark and, you see something has um, changed. And so she went back out the front door and just as she, she walked as she walked, went, walked out the front door, she walked further out away from the house and then she started to like, it seemed like she was about to have a nervous breakdown. Uh, lady, um, Lady Wingrave asked her if she was okay. And you know, she thought that she was already gone and is Sam coming to pick you up and, you know, she was like, uh, no, he's not. And he's made, she made some comment about him being with some other woman. And so he, I don't he's having an affair on her. And, you know, even, you know, lady went, uh, Wingrave offered to, you know, drive her home or, you know, she could just stay the night, he's, you know, stop for a minute to catch her breath. And then when she opened her eyes, she was in the woods and she kind of, she saw, um, Miles going over to uh, Jamie. Jamie was clearing clearing off some debris off the off the roof, and he walks over and grabs the ladder and starts shaking the la ladder like he's trying to make her fall off. And so she jumps off the ladder and basically told him that she was gonna kick his ass. And he was just unmoved, like, oh, okay. Anyway, so um, he said he said uh, something to her. And, oh, he said, look at you all, all flushed red, right? And so Hannah was like, Miles, like she, you know, couldn't understand. Like what in the world is going on with him? And then she starts seeing, feeling this pain in the back of her neck. And then the next thing you know, her neck snaps back and she's back at the campsite. And it's like, she's having this conversation all over again at the campsite at the bonfire. And she's having this conversation all over again with Miles. And she's kind of like discombobulated. Like what in the world is exactly is going on here? And she's now looking at the bottle of wine and she flashes. Now she's back in the house and she has, she's actually supposed to be vacuuming and, uh, the kids run past her at one point and she's telling them to slow down before they fall and break their necks. And then, uh, um, Peter brushed past her and goes into the room and the next thing you know she can hear uh rebecca saying don't touch me you know the last time i saw you you was going off on me about uh tasting um peter's batter and you know it's a you know I, she was just basically one trying to one trying to deal with that i haven't seen you and so and i don't know a couple of weeks a month or so like she was just over it and so he talked they talked it up talked it out i guess and they clearly um reconciled right and so uh, Hannah's still out there vacuuming. He turns the vacuum off and he tells her to like, you know, he, he tells her like, honestly, uh, maybe you should stop vacuuming. And he made some comment about getting a life or, you know, doing something else, something, right? So she's looking at him and she really cannot stand him. 
And so next thing you know, she looks over at the wall and she sees this crack again. And so she walks over to touch the crack and now she's back uh, in, she's in the hallway, out down the forbidden hallway, just outside that room. And she heard some noise and she went in and she catch Peter stealing a necklace out of Lady Wingrave's uh, uh, vanity. And she asked, asked him what exactly was he doing? And he said that, oh, uh, Henry Wingra uh, Wingrave told him to pick up a few things for him. And she said, oh, out of Lady, of, out of, uh, Lady Wingrave's vanity? And he was basically like, you know, yes. And so she said, well, what's in your pocket? And so he showed her the necklace and she was like, you know, she once told me that necklace was worth four hundred. Uh, it was it was four hundred years old, and worth thousands of dollars. And she asked for the necklace, and he basically told he was trying to tell her that you know you need to understand something that you are not part of the family, and that you know the minute you think you, you can no longer push him up, who you think what do you think is going to happen? That the family is going to take care of you, that the kids are going to take care of you. We are the help. And basically, he's saying that we're expendable. And so, she asked for the necklace. He gave her the necklace. And they had a few more words. And he walked out of the room. And so, as he walked out of the room, she turned back to look, to look where he was standing. And she could see that crack again. So, she kind of runs out of the house. Gets to the front. And then she sees someone standing there. And of course the person turns around and it is Rebecca. So she's like taken aback. She's confused. She still don't know what she's what's going on. So now she she's back in the in the kitchen interviewing Owen. And she starts asking him the questions. And she realized that, you know, she's having a sense of deja vu. And then she asks him, you know, to be honest, don't, you know, I don't want you to find this weird, but don't you think that we've done this done this before? And he said, actually, yes, we have. And so she looked confused and he said, but um, we, we have to go, we, we have to go through it again. And so she was, she was like, why? He said, I don't know. You tell me. And so he goes through the whole thing about him coming from Paris and uh, being a sous chef and having it. And it's, and she's obviously, she's sitting there confused. And then he starts asking her about um, uh, the kids and it would, it just became, uh, she started talking about, uh, Miles and she said, well, what about Miles? And she was, he was like, is he, um, what did he, what did he say? Is he a cruel child? And she was like, no, he's not. And she kept saying that he's not. And you know, he would never hurt. And then he finished her sentence. He would never hurt you. Like, why would you say that? Right. And so she's now kind of, she's feeling uncomfortable with the conversation. And now she's outside and she see, saw him smoking, so she took the cigarette from him and at, told him that, you know, she doesn't know, she knows that he misses Peter and that, you know, you know, she doesn't care that he keeps the light, if he keeps the light as long as he doesn't hurt himself, but he can't smoke and da da da. And then he basically just kind of laughed in her face and ran off, right? So she runs off behind him and ends up in the chapel where Lady Wingrave is there. And she was asking her if Peter came in and she basically asked her, you know, to come and sit down and she asked her, you know, how would she like to be a live, uh, be a live in. And she was like, well, you know, I would have to sell my house. And, uh, lady Wigram was like, well, you know, exactly. That'll be a nice nest egg for you. And of course we will compensate you. And she, um, and, uh, Hannah was like, well, no, because Sam, basically she felt like her and Sam might reconcile or something to that effect. And Lady Wingrave is telling her, you know, marriage is much like religion. You know, you believe in a higher power even though you've never seen it, even though you've never seen it. And just like you believe in your husband, even though you have, you basically all the evidence to the contrary that he's, you know, he's not the man that you, you know, you want him to be. And, you know, she eventually admitted to herself that, you know, she, even though despite everything that he's done, she still loves him. And so, the next thing you know, she's she's still in the chapel, but now she's talking to Rebecca. And she's talking to Rebecca about her relationship with Peter. And she's telling her, that, basically trying to tell her that Peter's a bad guy and like he's no good for you. And 
And Rebecca, she's young and she's like, you know, I've never felt like this before. And I know he's a little rough around the edges. And, you know, I've never met, been with a man that makes me feel this way. And, you know, I, I, I used to be a daddy's girl until I, until I grew up. And how her father would always, like, beat her down or tell her basically how she wasn't going to amount to anything. And, you know, to have this guy, Peter, you know, uh make her feel like she can do and be anything is kind of intoxicating. And, you know, she's, it's, you know, typical, you know, typically when women, you know, unfortunately have issues with their fathers, it just, it, it's, it, it was, it's just bad. So she's, her attachment to, I mean, but their relationship was unhealthy. Even Jamie was like, you know, there's a such thing as the wrong kind of love and they were definitely the wrong kind of love and that's obvious. And so eventually, you know, she really didn't want to hear anything else that Hannah had to say. She storms out. Uh, Hannah tries to run behind her. She opens the door and she sees this brick wall. And then she hears some click, the clicking noise. She turns around. It's Miles there flicking that damn flash, uh, that flashlight, that uh, lighter, right? So now she's back in the kitchen and Owen has made some, uh, some kind of stew or something and he wanted, uh, Hannah uh, wanted Rebecca to taste it and you know she was kind of out of it she didn't really uh, really want to eventually he who shall not be named walks in and he te says to Rebecca that he wanted to talk to her for a minute and uh, so she leaves and it's all giddy and whatever and so um Han uh, Hannah starts talking about you know that they had a mouse problem at one point and they decided to get these um the sticky traps instead of the traps that clamp to kill the um to kill the rat or the mouse and she said that she went to check the trap and she saw something on the on the this, on the trap and it wasn't a mouse she said she first she thought it was a caterpillar or something until so she looked at it and she realized it was uh the leg she was like this mouse chewed its own leg off to um to get free and she saw the the mouse like not too far from the trap and it had bled to death and she said, uh, basically, that's how she saw Rebecca's relationship with uh, Peter. Like, he's, she's not going to realize she's stuck uh, in a bad situation until she's stuck. And then she said something about, you know, denial, right? And so, she's now back in the kitchen flash, with Owen, having the same, in the same conversations and... She's just like, she doesn't really know what's going on. And he's, you know, telling her, you know, that he's like, after every, every time she goes back, she, he's asking her di uh, more questions about like, uh, different, uh, things. Like first he asked her about miles and then he was at, he asked, I forget what he asked her in this particular, uh, situ um, set, but he is just getting weirder and weirder and she's getting more and more frantic and confused. And then she, uh, she, then she finds herself in Rebecca's room. Um, Peter's there. Obviously, they've spent some time together. And then he get he wakes up and he starts telling her how, you know, um, Wingrave is never going to give you the pupillage. He's never going to make me a partner. And you know, they're going to always see us as the help, regardless of what we do or how well we do, you know, and we are, we're always going to be, they're always going to see us as the help. And I have this big thing planned that's going to uh, set us up for life. And then we could go to America and they have this, he like has this whole thing planned out and the whole time. Uh, Hannah's kind of listening like what, 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 so what does he have planned? Right. And so he gets up and he gets dressed and walks out. And then all of a sudden, Rebecca starts talking to Hannah. And she was like, you know, I like him like this. And then she kind of looks at, at Hannah and was like, you know, well, when did you come in? I've never seen you before. So Hannah was like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, she was about to walk out of the room. And Rebecca was like, well, no, I wouldn't go out there if I were you. And, you know, I haven't been able to bring myself uh, to go out there because I don't want to see what happens. And so Han uh, Hannah, you know, goes on out of the room and she was trying to tell Hannah not to go. And so Hannah steps out of the room. Peter is standing there and he's like, well, what are you, what are you doing up? And so initially you think he's talking to her, but then you look, they, you know, you, you, they, you see that he's talking to the kids, like why are they out of bed? And then he, and, uh, Peter will, and, uh, 
Miles was like, he heard a noise. And so Peter, and so Peter ends up going down the hall back to their, uh, the uh, Lord and Lady's room, get, stealing that necklace. He goes back and he sees them still staying in the hall. He was like, wait a minute, I thought I told you guys to go to bed. And this woman with the no face that you see that creepy doll who I thought was Rebecca, but it's actually somebody else. It looks look like it's somebody else. Uh, comes out of nowhere, grabs him by the throat, and is basically dragging him down the hall until he stops moving. So basically she strangled him to death and drags him around the corner. So now they're uh, they're standing there, uh, obviously Hannah's standing there like, what the hell did I just witness? And then you see him coming, bopping around the corner. And they're confused, and they're like, "Well, what what happened? Where where does she go?" And he's is none the wise. He's like, "I don't. He don't even know what they're talking about." And then you see the doll in Flora's hand. He's like, "Well, well, who is this? And what is this?" And so he got the doll from her. Ends up dropping the doll. He tries to pick the doll up, and he initially he couldn't. Like you know, ghosts can't really pick touch things. But then so I don't know how he figured it out. But he eventually picks the doll up and hands it to Flora. And then they started hearing footsteps. And they was like, oh my gosh, she's coming back. And so then you see her come back around the corner and drag him down the stairs. So while he's watching her drag his body down the stairs, he ends up grab touching, um, he ends up touching uh, Miles. And Mal started yelling at some flashing on this on with this ghost, like, bring back my body, bitch, and this whole thing. And Hannah's kind of sitting like, what in the world just happened? And so now it makes sense while my, now uh Miles is so inconsistent, like his behavior. And it's because once once uh Peter realized that he could speak through Miles or possess Miles for any so if, I, I don't know if it's a, if for a specific amount of time. Because, like I said, it's kind of he's kind of off and on. So I don't know if he can only do that thing that he do for a certain amount of time. But it makes sense why his why his behavior would be so he would be off, so off kilter at times and just be flying off the handle. And so once he realized that he did that shit, he's been doing that to that child the all this time. And so. Um, I think Hannah kind of re realized, okay, something is, there's something going on here, right? And so we flash the outside. She's still, the, this, whatever this thing is, is dragging uh, Peter's body um, across the, across the, the property. And she drags him into the lake. And you finally get a close up of the person's face. Why they don't have a face? I guess we might, we may figure that out. I don't know. But she drags him into the water and drags him under the water. And so Hannah's standing there watching and then she whips around and it's almost, and almost has a heart attack when she see Rebecca standing there. And so the next thing we know, she's back in the kitchen and she's going through this whole thing again. He, Owen is like, okay, you know what? I, you know, I know like, yeah, I'm like, I'm sick of doing this shit too. Like you basically it's, you know, he understands that it's something that she has to remember, but she, he, I think he even screamed like you're in denial or something. And then he, uh, the next thing you know, she's outside again. Uh, he, cause, uh, Miles is out there smoking and the next thing she ends up, uh, following him. She sees him talking to, um, Peter. So she walks over and tells him to get away from him and to leave him alone and, you know, this whole thing. And he is just basically like, he's just sick of her, how she ruins everything and how, you know, she can call the cops if he wants and he would love to leave that property. Da, 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 da. And then he does the unthinkable. And now we know it wasn't Peter. We, I mean, we know it wasn't Miles that did it. It was Peter using Miles, but it was just a hard, it was a horrible sight to see. So he ends up pushing Hannah down the well. And she, obviously she landed on a shop rock and broke her neck. So when we saw that scene of her standing with Jamie and her neck snapped back, that was 
Yeah. So then we get she's staring at the wall as she's dying, and then she sees that crack. So it, that makes sense why the crack was appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. And so now she's standing at the top, and she's looking at her body down at the bottom of the well. And um, Miles is like, well, "What you know? What's going on?" He has no idea what he's done, how he got there, nothing. And she's just, you know, she's just standing there staring at her body. And then you realize this is when Flora and Danny walk up when he, when she first introduced herself. And so he walks over and kissed her hand. And you saw why um, Hannah was kind of distracted. You realize why she didn't, you know, jump up right away to introduce herself to Danny when Danny first got there is because... She was looking at her body down at the in the well. And so, of course, uh, Peter is standing off to the side. He's watching this whole thing unfold. And so, of course, you know how that plays out where they all went to the house. And you were showing Danny the house. And so now, they're back at the bonfire. And he's going through this whole thing again about the past not being reliable and the Alzheimer's and the whole thing. And, you know, you should go to Paris and we could, you know, we could, you know, have a great life in Paris. And she eventually says, yes, we could go to Paris. But it, but it wasn't, I'm not, you know what, someone's got to explain this scene to me. But he, you know, it. the scene continued to play out as it had played out. So it wasn't nothing changed. So she says, yes, she would go to Paris with him. And then you see him standing up saying, uh, making some corny joke. And then, um, and then, uh, Jamie walks up and tells him that, oh, it's time for us to go. She, so she can give him a ride home. He is pretty much running behind, like, wait, you know, like trying to catch up with them. And then they disappear into the dark. And she kept repeating, you know, my name is Hannah Gross. I'm at Bly Manor. It's something that, that he kept telling her and this, with the, in one of their meetings in the kitchen. And she just started repeating that over and over and over and over again. And that's how this episode ended. Like I said, this was what I bought for our, one of the most interesting episodes. Um, I'm pissed, obviously, that Hannah is actually dead. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so mad. But it was... I, this was the one episode I will say that kept me, you know, in grows from, from, uh, start to finish. So I'm going to end this here and I will talk to you guys later.